Welcome back to Draymond Does Gaming. Draymond here playing more The Pale Beyond. This could possibly be the last episode. Um, I know we're getting to the end. I want to say there, from what I saw, just to get an idea of how many, how long this game takes to. I, you know, what? I'm gonna go in here because that wind is very loud to talk. Um, that we might be getting close to the end here, so um, we'll see how this, how long this takes. Um, if we go a little bit longer, oh, I'll, I'll cut it off at our, our normal end time, um, but may go on a little bit longer. Like I'll probably do like two recording sessions in a row, and if it's only like an extra half hour or an hour or something, I might just tack it on to one big episode. But we'll see. Um, so we're into week 32. 32 weeks. Yeah, there's been a lot of skipping. So I don't know if you, you can see it when you go to like the the load. Um, there's like, here's all these like week, 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 skip, skip, skip. So <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, we have like no fuel and no food which is pretty detrimental uh, we've got basically three of these and stuff for scurvy we do have two of those which is very nice uh, but let's go ahead and talk to people I must say doctor something in your walk as of late you're holding that head high well thank you I'm sure you're as eager as the rest of us not long now before we're be able to stretch our legs outside again. On that subject, I was running a few physical examinations in preparation of returning to work. Do you mind? Of course not. This won't take long, I hope. It shouldn't. Interesting. Ah, you smelled that. Lefty. Can't smell anything. I can. It's the smell of winter clearing up. We'll be out of this bunker before you know it. This calls for a silly. Never, well, Tucker, never pined, pinned you as so eager to return to work. <laughs> nice. Here, I'll be right back. I just have to feed my cat, apparently. He is bugging me here. Good old kittens. Nice and easy when it's just, like, right there. Morn. Winter might be finally clearing up, eh? About time. Gods, remember when those bloody penguins showed up at camp? It seems an age past now. Certainly come a long way. Aye, but don't be getting sentimental. Can't wait to get moving again. You're not the only one. Um, okay. We have three people that we should probably cure. Um, the med bay. You're wounded and freezing. You're malnourished and freezing. And you're just freezing. So we'll do that. I mean, there's no reason not to. Right, one, two, three, they're all there, but with only said two available crew. It's, sometimes this game is a little wonky with that. Okay, well, let's see. Let's take requests for the day. Speaking of who? Captain, heard you hurting down Timmy's request to remove tents. It's good to have the boy at my side. Still can't believe the lad snuck aboard. Than all this. He's been growing. Every day he's been growing. It's good to see that at least. Thank you for letting me keep an eye on him. Nice. Captain, I was running a phys standard physical examination on well. I'd request that you meet me in the medical tent this evening. Is there an issue? Why not present it here? The individual involved would rather this be handled privately. Apologies for sounding so cryptic. Just later, after dinner. Intriguing. I must admit, I'm curious what issue the doctor has encountered that requires your summons. 
Well, I needn't pry. Private matter is a private matter. Great. Thank you, Templeton, for your gracious understanding. Well, let's pet all the dogs. Perfect. Um. We'll exit. Because we do need to do this. Um. Couple people to go a hunting we shall go. A hunting we shall go. Hi ho the Dario. A hunting and a shooting we shall go. Um, I could have one of you actually cure the freezing. Is that more beneficial? I'd rather get Honestly, I'd just rather get as much food as we can. Um, now where to go? Maybe, hmm, maybe up like this way? Oh no. Well, ah, oh, it's penguins. We don't have any fish to give to the dogs, right? So we actually can't do this. Yeah. That is super unfortunate. Okay. Well, here's two things that we have to do. One is, well, we need to do that at the very least. Right? Because, like, that puts us up to the not red. And the same thing with the furnace. Um, I mean, we have one of you, so we might as well do that. Nice. Um, I don't really want to get rid of the tinned lemons. But I also don't overly want to do this. So if we do this, we're not even at like 25. Oy, I guess we have to. I'd like to keep this in case anyone gets scurvy out of any reason. That is so unfortunate. So very, very unfortunate. I guess we call the crew for dinner. Crew has their meal. And what a meal. The long dark continues. You can choose who to spend your evening with. Alright. Runt and runt's da. Almost over now. Hmm? What? Remember when that wind would scare the out of you? You'd hide under your blankets and cry until it went away. Don't tell anyone that. Huh. Embarrassed? Didn't hear a peep from you all winter. I'm all grown now. Plenty of grown still ahead to me. But hi, you're getting there. What's with you? Hmm? Got a keen eye on the medical tent. It's nothing that concerns you. Or you, apparently? Are you bothered being you being shut out of a meeting for once? Ha, you are. I don't care much for secrecy. Coming from you, that's bloody rich. It's true. Alright. Ah, Captain. Don't let the cold in. Camp Shaw, to what do we owe this visit? Ah, Kasha, this is actually a private matter. Do you mind giving us the tent for a moment? Oh! Very well. Kasha exits. Sorry, I don't think this is worth getting the crew worried over. You best not be dying, Kurt. <laughs> ha, perish the thought. I noticed an arrhythmia in his heart. It's difficult to determine the cause without further examination, but as it stands, my Kurt diagnosis is cardiomyopathy. <coughs> Here's adventure finally catching up the old ticker, eh? Well, it could be genetic. That's a guess still, but some unusual rhythm is no issue. The experience shortener is a breath while sitting down. Well, fatigue, a sudden cough when you lie down, dizziness. There's some swelling in your ankles as well. Who's to say that? Kurt, please, I'm trying to help. Yes, I've experienced it. What does this mean? Well, it's manageable. 
You'll have to take it easy for the rest of the expedition. Bah. No more hauling equipment. Very well. If you're offered a drink by the crew, refuse. Tough, but fair. And, well, it's my belief that Kurt is not fit to lead a lifeboat once we set off. No, Doctor, that's just not possible. I'm the navigator. You can't honestly expect anyone else to handle that sort of duty. You can at least provide guidance, Kurt. Yeah. Yes, but leading the boats are a separate matter entirely. I can't foreplan the entire sail. Your health comes first, Kurt. Entire crew's health is at risk if I'm not navigating those boats. Kurt, I won't mince words. You could die. We all could. But I don't want to argue with you, Arthur. We won't be getting anywhere doing so. It's up to you, Captain. That's true. Do you think it's worth the risk? No. Kurt's a good guy. Order you to rest. I know he's not going to like that. But I won't argue. I trust your judgment, both of you. Thank you for seeing reason, Kurt. Thank you, Doctor. It was a good catch. Well, let's not tell the crew about this, will we? I don't need them fussing over it, and a man is due his privacy. I'll respect that. Suppose I could get an early night, then. Kurt exits. Yeah. That does suck. But... It is something you do have to look for, right? So, actually that hits a little bit close to home because that's exactly, exactly what has happened in our life here. So, you awake to the sound of distant barking, seems one of the dogs has been excited by something. You sprint from your tent, you aren't alone and being awoken by the dogs. At the center of the campsite, a crack begins to form, followed by more spreading out. That's very loud. The dogs leap from the kennels, sprinting southwards. Wait, wait! Cordell runs across the cracks in pursuit of her dogs. Ice shifts beneath you. you. Hear the sound of something falling, then smashing. The lamps. Hells, what the is this? No, the flow is splitting. Quick, we need to move now. No wasting time. Nutley and Casher run out from the medical tent. Nutley carries his bag slung over his shoulder while Casher's hands are filled with notes. What is this? Ice is splitting. Is that all of your work? What I could carry, yeah. Not good. Your tent's going under. What? No. My, my equipment. Not go back that way, either of you. Understand? Templeton turns to Kurt. How should we handle this? Captain, we need to get out of this tent as soon as possible. Everything past that point is going to be swallowed up. You heard the man. Everyone haul what you can. Move. Crew get to work on the furnace and lifeboats, hauling as fast as they can. With the ice breaking as quickly as is, you realize you only have time to save one tent. Oh, man. I mean, it's got to be the medical tent, right? Supplies, we have, like, none. Um, the kennels is... Not as I wish to save the puppies. Um, Cash and Nutley have saved what they could. There's still the doctor's medical tools, an assortment of medical comforts, a crate of tin lemons to be saved. Okay. When it, Cordell's dogs howl in fear, you see the digging tools. Oh... Okay, we might actually want to do that. Then, inspect the supplies tent. Already saved what's in the hoosh and furnace. Everything of value, nothing remains. Okay, devote someone to the kennels, I guess. Uh, who do we do? Who do we have available? I guess it's Tashi. One sledding dog? That's it? All we get is one sledding dog? Tashi crosses the gap to rescue the hunting supplies. The ice splits further, the tents sink below. Oh, that's gonna be rough. The canopy collapses. The crew barely make it out from the burning tarp. Do you sustain burns and bruises from the frantic escape? Well, several of them were being healed, so hopefully that's fine. Ooh. 
week 37 and we're already jumped up five more weeks. That's insane. Oh, act three. Okay. We've settled a new camp by the shore. I don't know how many acts are in the game. This is the hard part to understand, right? Captain Shaw, personal log. A new camp has been formed in the aftermath of the ice split at the close of winter. However, the crew cannot rest at this time. After a long journey, the shore has been reached. In the coming week, the crew will sail out on the lifeboats in search of proper land. Soon, the ice shall be left behind. Wait. Week 29? Because this is week 37. Huh. What is going on here? Are we not actually on week 37 then, and we're only on week 29? Okay. That is very confusing to me. I wonder if that's a bug in the game then. Um, the ice split. The ice split proved... yeah, I guess so. The ice split proved to be a truly traumatic experience for the crew. The fact that the crew escaped with all lives intact is nothing short of extraordinary. Uh, the same cannot be said for our equipment. Many supplies were lost, washed away, and carried off the ice. One can only hope they no longer prove a necess necessity in this, the final stretch of the expedition. The open sea sail. The crew has reached the shore, but now a great challenge presents itself. The ice beneath our feet will not hold for much longer. It's destined to break apart and tear as it did once before. Solid ground must be reached in search of the point of rescue. To that end, the crew must sail out onto the open sea. I trust the crew's capabilities. A team of fit and well-experienced sailors, alongside a navigator in the caliber of Kurt Darling, though it may be seem daunting, the sail may prove to be the most comfortable task for the crew. Sailing is their lifeblood, as they are more equipped for this than they are anything else. Well, we're not wrong there. Okay, so this isn't actually week 37, this is week 29. Well, that would make way more sense in the grand scheme of things. Um, first off, we're heading out soon. Hi. Nervous. We have to be careful. Don't want, don't know these waters. Well, chin up. Better look confident for the crew. Hmm. Oh, Captain, I'm just triple-checking my notes. I'll kick myself if I end up leaving anything behind on the ice. Now to hope my report doesn't take a dip in the ocean. We really have to go onto the water. You scared? Yes. Can't exactly get to land without crossing, can we? Ice breaks off and moves. In the right direction? Maybe not. One more push onto land? Don't know if I've got the energy left. These old arms may break off if I try to row. Ha, huh, well, best see to it. We're in the open sea. You excited, Quilzy? What time we got off the ice? I'd like to be able to lead one of the lifeboats. Want the glory, eh? You're more like Kurt than me. Not that. I don't want to put my life in another's hands at this stage, huh? Fair. Fair. <laughs> I agree. Also fair. Smell that air, Doctor. This holds. Well, there'll be no better time for a sail, let me tell you. Well, isn't that fortunate? Har. Kurt, please be careful out there. I will, I will. Yeah. Makeshift medical tent. We still can put three in, which is great because we have three wounded people that need to be dealt with. Okay. Can we... Do we have anything to feed the furnace? So we didn't actually get anything. That does suck. Um, who is the freezing person? You know, it doesn't matter. Heal that freezing of Tashi. Done. So we did keep this stuff intact, so we, we don't actually have to put anything in right now, which is nice. And it is quite a lot warmer than it has been. So let's do the requests. Hammond and Nutley. 
What's our um, loyalty like for everybody here? Hammond's a good way. Yeah, Grimly, nowhere near. Junior, Templeton, Kurt. I know, Cordell, we need up. Nutley, Kasha. Okay. We got a problem. How urgent. Bloody compasses, they don't work. Excuse me? None of them. They've been all going hairy wire just after winter cleared. Mr. Hammond, we're due to set off in water. We can't wait on the ice a moment longer. You think I don't know that? Alright. Every step of this expedition has been plagued with misfortune, hasn't it? Or calm down, men. We have a clear sight line of land. We don't need the compass. Yeah. You know how easy it is for the waves to turn us around? What if fog rolls in? Tram, do you have an idea what's causing the error? Looks like the case of magnetic interference, but that can't be right, can it? Come further south than anyone in history. It may just be the case closer to the pole. We best just hope for good fortune. Hope? Great, we're sailing on a bloody hope. Yeah. We really are, sorry Hammond. Yep, yeah, we have a few injured from the ice split. I've managed to arrange a small batch of crates to treat anyone. Well done, Doctor. Quite ingenious of you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Templeton. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make any more comforts. I will treat whoever I can. Okay. Word, Captain? Speak your mind, Templeton. The animals. In all my years, I don't believe I've ever heard dogs being able to sail the Silver Seas. Have you? Well, I can't say that I have. One of us is going to have to break the news to the Kennel Master. Her dogs will not be joining us on the ocean. That's... rough. You don't think that hasn't crossed my mind? You understand what must be done. I do indeed. Yes, it's time we inform Cordell. I'll let her know. And this is... extremely unfortunate. Um, before any of that happens, can we, like, send people off to go get stuff? No? Hey, we're close to Viscount Island. Man. This is going to be, like, the saddest part of the game, isn't it? The animals are eagerly trained on the penguin fillet in Cordell's hand. She notices your approach. Captain, I was hoping to speak with you. Let her continue. The dogs scramble as she launches the meal across them. I understand you're going to shoot my dogs, aren't you, Captain? I wanted your opinion on the matter first. Is that so? She looks out across the animals. I'm no fool. I just don't want them to suffer. They've been through so much already. We all have. You're right. The animals cram continue to scramble over the flay. These dogs have known me their entire lives. She points at the dogs, tearing the fillet from its sibling. I used to carry that one around in my pocket as a pup. Do you have children, Captain? Um, my children here are on the ice. She throws you an odd look. Stanbury joins her side. I mean to sound cliche, Captain. They're all I have. Can't help more animals if you're dead. You have us, Cordell? Your dogs, Cordell? You can't help more animals if you're dead. We can't take them on the sail. Dogs can't sail boats. <sighs> Trying to do what's best for... No, that's going to lose loyalty. Um... We can't take them on the sail. There simply isn't enough room, I know. So, what happens to them? One of those boats is yours, should you wish. <laughs> take it in the night, I won't stop you. Um, We'll stay here, let nature take its course. Or we're going to kill them, which I really do not want to do. Uh, 
I mean, that could doom us all. And her. They'll stay here, let nature take its course? It wouldn't last long out here, Shaw. We've seen stranger things already that might outlive us all. We need that ammunition if we're not armed we'll lead to lost lives. If we perish at sea, I'd like to think someone made it at least. We've seen stranger things already, they might outlive us all. I'll have to chase them off, lest they try to follow the sailboats into the water. You can make your leave. Robin? Yes? I'm ashamed to ask, but I implore you this one mercy. She ruffles Stanbury. May I keep one? Just one? You can stay, Stanbury. You'll need my replacement captain after all. It tilts its head at you. Thank you, Captain. I won't forget this. Let's pet him. That. That is sad. Give the order to leave the dogs here. <sighs> Word spreads quickly that the dogs will not be joining them for the sale. Many of the crew take this last chance to sit with them while they can. The crew have their meal in relative silence. The crew share what little food they have with the dogs. The crew return to their posts. You can choose who you want to spend the evening with. That is so... <laughs> that sucks. But, you know, that's the nature of these types of games, right? Those creatures will be left behind come our departure. I wonder if they will attempt to follow us out to sea. I understand Cordell would consider them smarter beasts than that, but I'm not sure. They will die out here. <laughs> Considering our resources, Templeton, I'd rather preserve our ammunition. Perhaps, I doubt our kennel, mistle, kennel master will feel the same. It's been more silent than usual after this day's events. Understandably so. Perhaps it's best to check in on her. I would love to. There, there, good boy. I'm gonna miss you all around here. Yeah, we sure we can't bring them with us? Sorry, Timmy. We can't. Fine. Will we able to pick them up again on the way back? No. Maybe. Look at you lads. You're tough fellows, aren't you? It's gonna be rough out there. Maybe you'll get lucky. Right, maybe some penguins will flock onto this block enough to feed them for a year. Hear that? You'll be the top BCs on the ice before long. We have leopard seals running away in fear. Doesn't seem right. Letting them go on just to starve. Maybe we should put them down. Would you have wanted to do that? No. No, I wouldn't. Alright, back to your master. Don't remember not to run in after us when we leave. You'll get frost nip on your paws. Yeah. Won't be seeing them when we set off, won't we? Like those mutts better than most of the crew. They always pulled their weight, at least. I'll miss the wee beasties. Some last minute checks? Nah. No? Not last minute. Last minute checks come the morning we leave. Well, it doesn't hurt to be thorough. Anything can change. No chances. You seem concerned. Does it hurt to be? Not at all. You seem to be doing well. Considering the circumstances, I am. Thank you, Grimly. I get some rest. Eat up. All of you. You will need your strength for the times ahead. Lady Cradell, is this a bad time? It's my final evening in my kennel. I understand. I won't bother you then. It's... Quite alright. Did you need something of me? No, I wouldn't ask of you anything at a time like this. I just wanted to see how you were faring. Concern for my health, are you? My thoughts are on the final comforts of these dogs. My dogs. They will not see much comfort in the future. They will starve. They will suffer. 
have been kinder to put them down. I cannot bear Sanbury to suffer such pain. Perhaps they'll find food. Perhaps they'll find a way to live out here. For goodness sake, you're not a child. You know they won't. Right. May I ask you a question? Are the dogs included in that report of yours? Well, yes, I do have them listed by name. Taking records of their shifts. That's about it. I don't know much of the pack beyond that. Would you like to? Creatures of live rich lives. Perhaps that is of less value than the other names in your report. Not at all. They're part of the crew as any other. They were. Still, tell me about them. I wish to know more. Well, I suppose I should start with Stanberry, should I not? Stanberry was... That is so sad. Um, and we have nothing else to feed or anything, so we end it here. That's unfortunate to what we can do here, but that's where we are. We do get all this stuff though, so we still get that. I was really hoping we were going to. Freezing we can deal with. biggest thing is getting people um, getting getting people the engineers to do the uh, food or the the furnace temperature Grimley and Junior prepare for open sea yeah we can't really do anything else eh Quest tent. Well, let's talk to Junior and uh, Shaw. Almost ready to set out. How are the boats looking? Weathered. If we had any timber left, I could look at fixing them up. But we'll get there in one piece. Still need to sign a crew to their stations. Plan carefully, Shaw. Don't know what we'll face out there. Everyone needs to pull their weight. Anything else, Captain? Thank you both for everything. Yep, that's about it. Not apologizing for anything. <laughs> Nor should I be. Well, it'll be this week. Alright. Cures freezing if we put that in. One, two, three, four. Because that should get us to the 25 that we need. Well, one. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, I'd like to feed. Okay. Wasn't um, who I wanted. Darn. Okay. I don't want to put any more than that on there. So, we'll do this. Okay. There we go. End cache is no longer freezing. Good. Um, the solo person who Nomez. Hmm. Does that mean they could die this go? That could be bad. We can't heal them. Request tent, Templeton. It's time we set sail. This is our only chance to make land. The Stoke brothers are waiting for you by shore. Pretend to... No, not pretend to be adept at nautical matters. Trust you will choose your boat captains and allocate the crew wisely. Okay, well, we'll figure out what this all means. Preparations begin. Templeton, Hammond, Kirk, Cordell, Nutley, 
Kasha all board the largest lifeboat. Germaine Jr. manned the other two vessels. The remaining crew must be decided. All living crew must be allocated to the lifeboats before you can set sail. You have 16 left to assign. Okay. Lifeboat 2. Well, I think those two should go on the main boat. To like four or something like that, maybe. So out of the five people left, the people that are hurt, injured, maybe small... These people are all accounted for. Yeah. Um, I feel like one of each should almost all be here. Okay. They board the vessel. 11 left to assign. 6 and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They board the vessel. And then 1, Two, three, four. Was that right? Was that my counting properly? Who's my fifth? Where's my fifth person? Oh, and Runt. See, I wanted Runt. Oh, man. He wasn't. I thought he had the lock on him earlier. All right. Well, there we go. Okay, I guess that's going to be it. You're now ready to set sail. Let's do so. I'll be able to return from this point, are you sure? I mean, what else is there to do? Camp is packed up and lifeboats are prepared for sail. As you glance back to shore, you notice the dog sitting on the edge. They paw the water, eyeing the boats and their master. Cordell readies a rifle and fires into the air above them. Enough. To scare them off. Everything is ready, Captain. All that's left for you give the order. <sighs> Let's get off this blast of dice. I'll see you all on the other side. It's a quarter past two in the afternoon. For some back home, the end of lunchtime. For you, the beginning of a countdown. Consider the boats carrying you through the ice. Try to keep your mind on the mission ahead. Observe the souls aboard. Observe the soul. Anticipation is quickly melted away. The malevolent stagnation all were feeling on that flow. Your past and future seem to shrink against the glaring challenges of the ice ahead. Allow yourself to enjoy this for but a moment. This, all of this, this is the adventure that was promised. The advert is still imprinted in your memory. Glory to be had in the event of success. There's no choice but to succeed then. You grip the tiller firmly. Stroke. The boats lurch forward, bobbing side to side, parting the inky waters. Stroke. You're gaining speed now. Stroke. Oh, this is cool looking. The art in this game is so good. The cadence is reached by all those rowing, yours lift in unison. Uncomfortable for most, the crew has arranged the equipment as best they can to lift their sitting position to account for the raised edges of the boat. It's not long before Nutley begins a periodic ritual of dry heaving over the side of the boat between his turns rowing. 
Kasha curls over her camera, paranoid of any moisture that may enter its mechanisms. Continue to sail ahead. Like, both of those things seem bad. The fog finally clears to reveal the ice around. This is cool. Like, look at this art. It could be like a painting. It's beautiful. I guess it really is hand painted, so. Or sure as heck looks like it. you feel to be here, right? This would be so intense. Well, so far, the hardest part of the game has been dealing with the dogs and trying to figure out that. Oops, birds are still flying here. That's a good sign. Generally, if there's birds above, that means there's either land or food sources. So that's always a good thing to see. Terrifying, but profoundly beautiful all at once. Agreed. By evening, you've nearly escaped the ice. The empty ocean is almost visible on the horizon. Boats lurch. The smell is horrendous, though. Seemingly enticing to a large gathering of snow petrels. They shoot down from the sky at their leisure, scooping up a meal at a time. They're mackerel ice fish, I think. How do you know that? My father used to take me fishing whenever he could. Hammond stops rowing momentarily. You sure about that, kid? Because you've been puking for the years straight, at least. The doctor goes red and tries to prove he can hold it in. Yasha furrows her brow, readying the camera. What do you think it means? It doesn't mean anything. Cold current, most likely, where the ice meets the ocean. Grimly calls from his boat. It's a bad omen. Living aren't supposed to be out here. Temple King grumbles to himself something about superstition. Birds overhead, it's not impossible to avoid their droppings. At least it's warmer than the snow. Gross. One finds its way into the doctor's hair. A fresh gastral purge follows suit. Kasha looks to you uncomfortable, shielding the camera. What do you think, Captain? I'm sure there's an explanation, whether we explain it or not. Sailors have made a career to find where people shouldn't go. Grimley's no different. I'm no different. Huh. Yeah. She seems satisfied with this answer, taking a photo across the water. Cordell lists the fish from the ocean and presents it as a stanberry. The animal smells it before shying away from the food. She it back in the ocean and buries herself in the animal furs. Gross. Yeah, mackerels are not s nice smelling. After hours of rowing, you finally reach the o open ocean. It's impossible to avoid the stingy sprays of the sea as they invade the boats periodically. Everyone is left bailing with whatever they can find. Hats, mugs, even bare hands lift out the water. The crew begin to curse into the night at each other and at it. The event's gone past. It's the only means of protest that doesn't interrupt attempts to remain warm. Join in the incessant blasphemy. Refuse to take part, but allow the others. I mean, that's probably increases the morale. Let the sailors sing their slurs into the night out here. They should be allowed their own reprieve. Nutley looks to see if you curse, and decides it isn't safe. Templeton, at least, lets out the odd posh paragraph. Interesting. Well, that doesn't sound great. Well, it's a storm. No. Definitely not a good thing. Oh, 
can't quite hear what they're saying. But I love it. Like, look at this. This is intense. Lightning flashes to the west, followed by Rapture's thunder, underscoring the sounds of the sea. Hold fast! Your screams are lost in the thunder as a large, abrupt wave smashes against the boats. Rogue wave! You just about crest it. One passes before the other two lifeboats join you. Every sailor knows the tales of rogue waves. Freak anomalies that plague the seas, such as these. You hear singing started by Junior. It soon affects the rest of the sailor folk, defiant against the storm. The song is about three sisters dancing to seduce a sailor. Okay. Yeah, you let the sailors do what they need to here. Second larger wave hits the boat, the same again, just about. The sailors change key. Sing with them. You don't know the words, but you'll never forget this tune, echoing as best as you can. Others follow suit from beneath the tarp, even Templeton sings. The third, final, and largest wave hits the boat. You're near, lifted near vertical. Keep on singing. The spray enters your lungs. It feels like forever before the boat finally crests the wave. The tiller buckles in your hand. Your eyes burn from the salt of the sea. All three boats make it across. That's intense. You finally make land. Navigator is the first to step on solid ground. He turns to the rest of you, sodden. We made it, lads, ladies and gentlemen. Land at last. Land. Act four. Just like that. What an intense um, journey. I think that that's actually a really good stopping point then. That whole high, uh, that low of the, of what to do with the dogs to the high of just this last little bit of getting through this, that's intense. This has been, this has been really good. Um, yeah, so I think we'll call this episode here. So thanks again for watching so much. This game has been quite the journey so far. Um, We'll soon be done it, I imagine. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.